it's Tyler with Gaia Force Gaming, and I am here with Dan Vang. What's up, Dan? Hey, everyone. How's it going? So, uh, he did it again. We just finished the first regional for uh, the BT5 format in the Digimon Trading Card Game, and uh, Dan Vang went 7-0 and undefeated with, uh, with his Imperial Dramon list. So, we're here to take a look at <clears throat> the cards he played. A lot of people have already been asking for it. So, uh, yeah, I guess with that, just uh, take it away. If you want to talk about your list and your matchups and, you know, all the good stuff. Sure. Just got to highlight our Guy Force War Greymon over here first. <laughs> my memory marker. My big memory marker. All right. Um, sure. So we will show off the babies first. Uh, we have four demi -V. I'm going to stay with the four Demi V. Uh, fifth one, maybe an Upa if I wanted, but honestly, four Demi V is good to go. I always get that draw from the gym, which helps a lot. The rookie lineups we have, hands down, definitely. Best rookie in the game, aside from Pulse One, I, sh I should say. V Mon. You always want to have it over the Demi V so you can swing and draw a card, right? Up next, we got the two restand Vmon. Pretty clutch at times, just swinging. Uh, when you put it under an Imperial Dramon and you restand and you swing, pretty good to get that extra draw because we are looking for pieces in this deck. We have our five vanillas. Um, Self explanatory. Uh, sometimes you just want vanillas, 3k, a lot of DP reduction in this format in the form of Ikmon, uh, was it Koromon, just Starmon, just the minus 1k sometimes hurt if you have like a 2k or 1k Digimon out, so sometimes having a 3k uh, kind of forces them to use a lot more uh, resources. And also just putting them to 1 to memory choke is pretty good sometimes. A lot of times today I was just, uh, I needed the exact memory, and sometimes just tossing out like an Elecmon or Gomamon to choke, or even just putting that myself to zero and then going into a blocker to choke them helped out a lot today. Uh, we run a one Gabumon. Really love this card. I want to run more, but for now, we're just keeping it at one. Um, just because the 1k DP, uh, Getting reduced and having to die really fast kind of hurts, and especially if that Padawan is kind of just giving them a freebie. And rounding up our level 3 lineup is two Sayakoman. Uh, Sayakoman says, Opponents turn your opponent can't reduce digivolution uh, costs. So, definitely helps out against a green matchup when they want to do digisorption. Helps out against the Lilith Loop matchup, which didn't help me out today, unfortunately, when I did play it, but it does help. Uh, against decks that do use like maybe like a Nokia or anything trying to reduce to get their white level 6 out. Um, and also hurts uh, in the mirror match. So I never want to see someone play this against me. Yeah, those new guys are really cool. Oh yeah, and, and these guys have a red version in Giasmon or Gossmon and Cupemon for sure. So, some colors have it. Uh, we got the two Toby... The two gorilla, uh, I think a two two split is pretty good. Sometimes you break and you just gotta hard play the Toby to try to climb up the chain. Uh, sometimes gorillas need it if you gotta actually swing over these five K blockers and not crash into them, or make them waste a little bit more to reduce the DP and kill it if you're playing against yellow. We are playing three Koelamon. Used to be four, but I added a Grizzly. Grizzly did help at times today. I'm not sure if I want to move this to like another Grizzly or if I'd rather keep the 3-1 split. Still thinking about that, but as you know, blockers do help in this game because it's definitely needed. And rounding out our level four lineup, the MVP of the deck. Um, let's pretend this one's alt art for now. <laughs> uh, if anyone else had to contact me with an alt art, uh, let me know. I'm ready. Um, self-explanatory, just evolving over a tamer and swinging for game is so clutch. Um, there were some games where I had Lobomon, but I couldn't capitalize because they had a blocker. Um, 
And sometimes, especially, I think I played against, it was either Mustafa or a different yellow player, excuse me if I forgot your name, um, he had a Pitamon and a Unimon, so I, there was no reason to evolve and try to swing because the Unimon would have blocked. So it was a very tough situation where I had to wait to get rid of the Unimon and then evolve over it and to keep going. Yeah, MVP of the deck for sure. Very nice. Um, level 5 lineup definitely has not changed. Bread and butter, right? It's the 4 Pyeldramon, 4 Dino Bee. Um, what can I say? You really always want Pyeldramon, but sometimes, sometimes, especially today, the Dino Bee has come in a little bit more clutch. Um, especially if maybe they swung into your security and something's rested, that piercing jamming helps a lot, out a lot. But usually always, if you want to go into Pyeldramon, you want Pyeldramon under it, just to restand. A uh, level six lineup is the four Pyodramon. Can't change that. Uh, some of the best, right? Evolving over a Pyodramon or a Dino B. Just restanding any jammers, including himself. There was one match I had today against a yellow deck. Um, he couldn't get a rookie, unfortunately, for him, so he put me at four. So I evolved a jamming Vmon and I put a Pyodramon out. And next turn I drew the Imperial, so, you know, that's a lot of jamming checks for someone who didn't have a rookie and couldn't put anything on board early game. And the tech for today that saved me a lot of games against Yellow, the Nidhogmon. Um, not sure if I want to bump it to two, but just one just felt so good when I did see it. Um, it did help me in security one time, too, because I think someone was swinging with 12k and the 13k, you know. Great. And it's not an Imperial because I want to see it in my hand, right? Not <laughs> the security. Nidhogmon, definitely an MVP. Um, just a lot of people don't expect it, especially uh, going against maybe yellow. Um, they'll swing a bunch of times, everything's rested, and hopefully you have a stack in raising that didn't die from DP reduction. And you can go into a Nidhogg and just bottom deck all their stuff. There was one game I had today which was really tough. Um, I had to high roll it. I could have evolved to Imperial, but it wouldn't have mattered, right? Because checking one security, he still would have had to crack back and went into, like, Lord Nightmon or Slash and run over my Imperial. So I made the choice just to go to Nidhogg and just get rid of his three cards. And even though I felt, quote-unquote, behind because I had um, less security, I at least had more board resources and I was able to build, and he had to wait to build as well again. So I had the advantage to swing for an extra security check. Very cool. Yeah, if you're uh, if you get bummed out seeing Dino Beam on too much, just put Nidhogg in your deck. That's that's the secret. Definitely, definitely <laughs> that is the move. Um, rounding up our level sevens instead of the OG Omnimon that cost six, we're running the new Blitz Omnimon. Um, when did you evolve? You want to spend them, right? And then. It's Blitz, so if the memory goes to your opponent's turn, you get to swing an extra check. Um, the all turns is, let me read it verbatim. If an opponent's effect would delete this Digimon or return it to its owner's hand or deck, you may prevent it from leaving play by trashing a level 6 under it. Shadows to Max to Para for reminding me that if he's rested and someone tries to Nidhogg it, you can just return the Imperial to hand to keep it on the board. So definitely nice and clutch. Um... That doesn't happen off. If it does get DP reduced, it dies anyway. Um, due yeah. to game mechanics, regardless. Um, so you can't do that. But it's just nice to get an extra check. So ideally, if you can get, like, your Pyeldramon check, two Imperial checks, and this uh, Blitz Omnimon check, that's four checks already. They're only at four. And you just have a big boy that needs to get off the board. Otherwise, they're on the... Trying to reset, trying to win. Yeah. Yeah, I do like this. I do miss the OG Omnimon sometimes for removal, but sometimes you just gotta swing really, really fast. Yeah. Uh, rounding out our tamers, Bree Davis. Picking up that green and blue is so good, especially memory tamer as well. Um, and we ran one, actually, Sora Joe. Um, Sora Joe's not so bad. I kind of like it. Um, not sure if I would switch this to another Davis or not. Um, but just being able to gain two memory if they 
uh, don't have a source, it feels good. And even just swinging with a blue Digimon, tapping it, and taking out two sources from the bottom, definitely feels good if, you know, maybe they got a Lord Nightmon or something. You just want to pick off those little sources that reduce your DP a little bit more, and so they're able to swing over your uh, your big boy, right? Um, never did get the... I did get the chance to have both of them on play a couple times, but I never did get the, you know, the cool play where you go to three and then go to five, unfortunately, because people oh. played around it. It was nice at one point because there was one game I didn't have Davis, and I did have this. I think I was playing the purple Lilith Loop player, Brain. Um, he was playing some vanilla, so I was able to go to three, so it did feel like a memory tamer at one point when I didn't have Davis. I'm a big fan of uh, Joe and Sora. Yeah, sorry. Joe and Sora. I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> Four hammer sparks, no less. No less. That's just the move. And then two Kakaida's Breath. Um, Kakaida's Breath was pretty good today. I think it saved me at least once in security or twice in security. But the main one was, uh, shout out to Brain again, the purple Lilith player. He had a board of stab. Like, he put his Lady Dabimon out and he choked me to one. And I was like, well, Lilith is going to come out unless I stop it. What can I do? He had nothing raising, so I just Kakaida's Breath him. I gave him six to work with, but he, was, he wasn't able to pop off a turn early and that I already had some resources on board where I could swing and knock off at least three security checks before he was able to get the loop going. That kind of helped me a little bit. Yeah. So I wasn't able to knock off any security checks and he completed the loop on uh, pretty much toast. And that is the deck. That is the deck. So <clears throat> how do you feel about Imperial in the BT5 format? I think Imperial is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like tier 1 to meet everything else, but I still think it's like the fringe tier 1.5 that can be tier 1 uh, depending on your matchups. I do think that Nidhogg does change the lines of play a little bit, so you can feel a little more, I guess, safer fighting a yellow deck, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's still a viable candidate, right? If people, people sleep on it, you're just swinging for multiple checks and then uh, you know, it's over. A lot less people I see are playing the Recovery Salmon in their yellow decks. Um, my matchups today, I did face four yellow players, one green, one Rookie Rush, and one Lilith Loop. Uh, not sure how much uh, security players were here today, but I didn't play any, so I dodged them all. So I don't know how that matchup would have went. <laughs> nice. Nice. So what do you what do you think like the biggest problem for Imperial is? Like, What's the hardest matchup? Honestly, uh, Lord Nightmon still, because you never feel safe outside the raising area, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just every time, I think for me too, every time I had Pyodramon or Dino Bee, I didn't want to raise them, because I either lose to, um, I could lose to Spiral Masquerade, right? All they need to do is like, have maybe one body on board and have one raising, they'll promote and just place, uh, and then play like a smaller body and just masquerade me and it's gone, right? Or even then, if they had like some sort of play where they risked it, they could still have two bodies, swing with something, you know, reduce me, and then spiral masquerade. So many options to like get rid of our level five so much faster. But I definitely feel Lord Nightmon is still probably one of the hardest matchups. I think Green is still probably, if not one of the B the best decks in BT five that can pivot because they have so many good boss monsters to control the board. You can still have DK if you like if you're running more Grand Kawaga, right? But I think. Imperial still has a tough, tough time with yellow decks. Yeah. Especially most yellow decks run like, what, six, maybe seven, maybe even eight blockers. That's a lot. I'm trying to swing for checks. If you block me, okay, part of my strategy is gone. And then you just minus me and run me over. Yeah, I think Imperial, uh, it's just, if, if you're new to the game or you can't find BT5 or just have to buy some singles, it's a very low upkeep deck that doesn't change that much and... It still performs yes. really well. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. If you're just a player who might just want to go, I guess, a, a quote-unquote budget route, this is a little more less expensive than other decks. Uh, I think just depending on, you know, most expensive right now is probably just the rookie V-Mon still, probably. The jamming and possibly just the Blitz Omnimon. Where are you? 
But overall, it's not too pricey because a lot of people aren't playing as much because they want to play like newer cards, newer decks. Yeah. Um, if I was financially smarter, I would have just bought some singles <laughs> <laughs> instead of a bunch of BT5, but I like to play new stuff too. Yeah, so that's awesome. I really liked your deck. I know you showed it to me before the event, and I was stoked on it to see how you would do, and I'm so stoked that you won the first event. So, Thank you so much. Win in the books. A precedent for BT5, right? <laughs> I win in the books for GFG right off the bat, and yes, you got your uh, quote unquote second invite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, everyone who's watching, that's the list. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I know we're gonna try and have some more lists from this event and uh, from earlier events, and just. I, li I like BT5. I think it's a much more diverse meta than BT4, and I think there are a lot more... There, I think there's going to be a lot more meta shifts. Like, my big problem with BT4 was once, like, the top three decks were solved, there was, like, no room to innovate. It was just kind of like a triangle format forever. Yeah, exactly. I agree. There's a lot more diversity and creativity that can be involved. Yeah. But I I'm excited to see what this format's like for the next couple months, and... Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. We got two more regionals to go. See if we can get everyone on the team an invite. Of course, open for it. Shoutouts to the team. Shoutouts to anyone who's been uh, helping me uh, tweak the deck, suggestions, things like that. I was running a, a Takumi Iba before, but uh, it did feel broken at one point, right? Because if you have a Restand Vimon, you have Takumi Iba, and you have you have Over Imperial, you could potentially or yeah, you could potentially draw three cards. And at one game where I was testing, I, I drew four cards, and I felt really broken. But I couldn't really play the cards. You know, you draw them, they're just in your hand. Yeah. And it's hard for, I guess, a lower bottom-heavy deck, right, with rookies to have Takumi Aiba on the field because you can't really swing and get some like, quick checks in. But I took it out. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 with jamming Veeam on it, just feels really counterintuitive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks for winning the event with Imperial Dramon. Keep the dream alive. Have lots of people playing this. I can't wait to see everyone running Nidhogg and Imperial now. <laughs> Nobody's safe. Nobody's <laughs> safe. So, yeah. Uh, everyone, just like, comment, subscribe. Keep an eye out. And we'll be here for more Digimon content. Bye, everyone.